Miari, gena usakasakabo, hola y buenos dia, hello and good day. It's Elba again, aka Phoenix Taino, playing some more wakfu. Server maintenance will begin in four hours and 29 minutes. What? Server maintenance at midnight. Okay. Well, I better get my game on then, right? So this quest is Hero Potential, and we have to head to the Mercenary Reserve. If you don't know where that is, you can always click on the compass, and it's going to tell you where to go. Um, but I know where that is. We're just going to go here, take a right, and then the building on the left. With the blue. Well, I mean, they all have blue roofs, but this one. <laughs> all right. You know this is the right place because when I click on the compass nothing happens. If I get far enough away from it, the compass is gonna be like, no girl, you went you're going the wrong way, come back. So we know to go here. And when we hovered over the door it said mercenary reserve. So that helps confirm that we're in the right place. Um recover the equipment is the next step. And this is the creative equipment. We're gonna right click rummage. And that cute little cutscene was just letting me know I'm about to get attacked. So attacked. Um, let me see. I want to go here first. I feel like I want to go. I mean, either way, might as well start here. Weed killer barrel. So we're going to attack the barrel. Let's see if just attacking the barrel does enough. Yeah, you're done. Great. Now we don't waste our moves. I'm gonna go here for now. Cover my rear. Quite literally. Okay, yeah, you do that. Whatever. What is the flower week too? So we can right click and see it's got like no dodge or log. No initiative. Well, I think that's force of will. This is initiative. And it's not weak to anything in particular, so I'm just gonna do that. Just keep hitting it with shit. Ta-da! Seeds of Chaos! Alright. So we finished that quest. And now the next quest is to go back and see Pappy Pow. To finish the we finished the hero's potential now we're starting seeds of chaos that is correct the way I said it before was not sorry about that but yeah this is a good way to tell if you're getting close to Pappy Pal's house or not you see the smiling axe as I like to call it <laughs> So it says, what's up, little one? You look rather out of breath for such an easy mission. I was attacked by chaos plants in the stockroom. Chaos plants. So they did manage to access our stockroom. Who is they? They are nasty people that harm our fair city. They're part of the cult of Ogres, one of the five factions of the world of 12. The day one of those Ogres cult fellows run into me, they have my shovel to do with them. What is their plan? Make the world even worse than it currently is? I'm not sure what their end goal is, but what I do know is that they're they getting in my way and in my city. Would you like to track them? Why don't you go yourself or send one of your mercenaries? <laughs> Sorry, little one. I'm too busy at the moment. The Guild of Mercenaries is taking care of rebuilding the entire town, a vital and significant mission. I already sent the Astrop Knight to investigate, but he hasn't come back yet. You're the only one who can do it. I have faith in your skills, and if things go sour, avoid fighting them head on. The Astro of Night should have left the mission to me instead of giving me the rat one. I'll do what I can to find the trail of Ogres cult member. Ogres cult members. There we go. You have my thanks, little one. A report from one of my mercenary states that members of Ogres cult were spotted several times in the old cemetery to the southeast of Astra, a graveyard to set the mood. How quaint. Oh. 
All right, so we've completed Path of Chaos, or um, Seeds of Chaos. Now we're on Path of Chaos, and we got to find the trail of the Ogress cult members. So you can use the quad, the compass, and it'll take you directly to the cemetery. I'm gonna go ahead and um, actually follow the compass, even though I know exactly where I'm going, and I could take a Drago turkey. That doesn't help you guys if you haven't activated the Drago turkey yet, or um, oh, wrong way, this way. Compass is saying me to go here now. Oh, I see. So when I go around this way, it's gonna let me eventually. No, I'm taking y'all everywhere. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I'm so sorry. So. Let me just go the way I know to go. The compass is saying to go this way, right? Don't do that. Go this way. And then take a left at this guy. All right? The zap is up here, right? So to get you your bearings and help me get mine too while we're at it. I'm going to keep going out this way. Now we go down. Ta-da! Cemetery. The compass isn't always helpful. There's not enough monsters in this area. So whenever that happens, you can look here or press W for walk foo. And if it doesn't have a line or a number down here at the bottom, it means that there's no minimum or anything like that required. If you plant here, whatever you can plant here from these, great. But it's not gonna, it's not necessarily going to affect the balance, right? Here, we want to have between 100 and 150 uh, skeletons, but there's only 92. So, what we're gonna do First, close this out, take these seeds that I just collected, and plant. But we need to plant somewhere where there isn't already a bunch of these guys, which looks like back here is a good place. <clears throat> Ta-da! There isn't enough space for you to plant here, but literally, where am I supposed to plant then? Do we need more or not? Because it's looking like we do. We'll go wherever we, wherever we can. Come on. There we go. That should be enough. Yep. Ta-da! Now, the Trail of Ogress Cult, we're going to go back to this guy as a point of reference, right? So, it's super simple. Once you get in front of where the clan member is, it's going to be the grave with the cat on top. When you hover over it, it'll say the Blasphemer's Crypt, and that's how you know that's the next point. Now, the next quest is the Blasphemer's Crypt. So we got a sneaky Grambo. I don't know where he is. He looks invisible. Oh, he's all the way back here. Okay. Oh, okay. I remember what this is. So, when it comes to this guy, we need to move forward. It's not a fighting. We're not fighting here. We want to get close to him and hit him 
directly within close range until he's KO. Fuck these flowers, basically. I'm just gonna keep going until you get to him. See, they're gonna hit you because they're rude like that. Hmm. And increase our action points. Now we can fuck this guy up. See? One hit. Done. Victory! So, that's not something the game necessarily tells you. You know what I mean? Um, let me see. Quest Blasphemer Cult has started. Whoop. Yeah, it doesn't tell you. It just puts you in the fight. But yeah, that's what you do. Let me go down here. Follow the arrow. Just go straight. Because there's that little guy again. Alright. So, I'm going to start the request. Or, start the fight, rather. Start the request. I'm still a little bit in... <laughs> In work mode, okay? I be doing, like, distribution requests and shit all day. <laughs> anyway. I don't want to talk about work. gonna pass these assholes and thankfully it's not gonna take much to hit this guy oh no we're, we're not close enough we still gotta oops, be within so remember how I said it needed to be melee uh, just as a quick reminder Distance spells are three squares and further. Melee requires for you to be within two squares. So that's why that wasn't working. But these same spells work now. So a lot of the times, if you think you're doing everything that you need to, then and, and what you're doing isn't working, Check the specifics of the quest. Like if I go to, uh, I just press the Q, but you could check your quests um, by going to this quest management icon and then clicking the book, the quest book. That's what this is, quest book. And let's see, Blasphemer's Cult. These orange flags are usually here in the Mount Zenit area, right? So the Blasphemer's Crypt. It says, what is this place? It looks like Ogre's Cult has been using the crypt as a storeroom to keep all the things that cause Trouble in Astrob, explore the crypt from top to bottom, explore the crypt in Astrob Cemetery. And it looks like that's it. Hmm. I remember, I feel like it said somewhere, perhaps in the beginning and I didn't notice. Or maybe perhaps when you enter in the dungeon, it, I know a lot of areas, like there will be some kind of pop-up somewhere that tells you, like, that gives you some kind of instruction. And if it's not clear enough, there's always Google. And this video. <laughs> so let's go here. What an asshole. Let's see. Weakest to well, pretty even throughout, it looks like. Eight, five. 14, 11, 8. So this would be probably my strongest spell. But I want to hit from the side or from behind. So whenever I went to move and, I, and those squares were red, it's because I'm locked in those directions. So I have limited movement. 
Wait, what does this do? Does it work on me? It might only work. Hold on. Oh, I am losing movement points and shit like that. That's crazy. Okay. So. You think you're hilarious. Wait, something lit up. Here we go. Let me get rid of you. So what did that do? Whoops. Nine. Everything's doing nine, it looks like. Against nature. Activates or deactivates against nature. Wait, what's this? What does this do? Oh. My. Goodness. Can I hit things with you? Summons a Coney and the next turn the Coney transforms into a super Coney stronger, more resilient, and more... What does this do? Healing murmurs. It didn't heal me. I don't like that. Oh, I guess one person? Start of the end rips, turn the Coney Vault into Super Coney and two Aqua Points. Yay! Look at my Super Coney! Did it give me more Aqua Points? I didn't notice. Okay. That's usually how these things work. I will be able to move eventually. Shit. No me gusta. Repulsion. Heal 100% of HP lost of the caster. Okay. Did it kill the Coney or did my... Put that up there so we can see that information. I don't like this. Do nothing. Okay. Actually, I should probably do like these. Okay, hold on a second. Why won't you guys die? <sighs> this is so annoying. Sorry, I'm used to being able to kill these guys really quick now. So having to having to struggle through this again. It's a little annoying, but you know, it is what it is. I'll get over it. I'm learning how to play a new character at least. So there's that. to the side so this oh nope 
Oh my god, why won't you die? It's so annoying. this time. Oops. Darth Coney. Not just any Coney. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Hold on. We're having a hard time here. There we go. Okay, so we finished that quest. I'm going to deselect this. I'm going to move this out of the way. Oh no, it was fine right there. Now that I closed it. So, for the Eneripsa, just to get a better idea, since this is still up and I can actually take the time to read it, it says that we can summon a Kony on the next turn. Transforms into a Super Kony, which we saw. Um, let's look at Against Nature. So, against nature is percent heals performed converted to percent damage inflicted. So, healing mode is your normal state, and or your default state, rather. And then, if you go against nature, that makes you, that makes you a badass. Your attacks are now stronger. Healing mastery converted to elemental mastery. At the end of the turn, you lose 10 grace bonus instead of gaining it. Uh oh so the grace bonus here is a percent of heal performed so I guess your heals get stronger and better as you level up so that that makes sense I hate that all this stuff is like opening craziness everywhere I had it so organized fuck it okay so there's minus 50% extra heals performed in against nature mode so that makes sense because you're converting the percent heals performed to percent damage. Your heals now aren't as strong. Sacrifice one for the other makes sense. Um, let's see what else we have. So that has to do with the conies. We're going to put all the coney stuff here for right now. 
against nature, da 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 da, grace bonus. Yep, okay, we got that. Now we have the coney that with against nature, we get a dark coney, otherwise, it's a regular coney or a default coney. At start of the end of next turn, the coney evolves into a super coney. So we have the coney that does a spell called Healing Murmurs. Shit. I'll leave you here then, I guess. So Healing Murmurs heals the target. One use per target. Okay. So just one time for everybody on the board, though. Um... Oh, the Coney evolves into a Super Coney. It has two Wakfu points. Or it gives you two Wakfu points because the blue is you, if I'm not mistaken. Green is an ally, red is an enemy, and then blue means you, yourself. So, with the Coney, its characteristics are six action points, three movement points, 20% of the Enerypsa's max HP, and it looks like it's the same for the Darth Coney. Um, it cannot lock or be locked, and the Coney does healing murmurs, which heals everybody, you know, heals six, one use for a target, we saw that earlier. So with the Darth Coney, we have Weakening Whispers. Alright, and that's going to be, Weakening Whispers is negative 50 elemental resistance. So that means spells will uh, end up doing more damage because the character, the target's resistance to spells is weaker. Uh, that's it. That's for the Darth Coney. So we heal with the with the default Coney. With Darth Coney, we get um, reduced resistance to spells. Now with the Super Coney, might as well leave it in the middle of the screen because we're going to open up a bunch of other shit. Here we go. Oh, we don't need whis weakening whispers or healing murmurs because we already saw that. That's what the that's what the Coney already has no matter what. So um, in addition to that, Super Coney gives us these three additional cool things that we can do. So... The Abnegation is the Super Coney offers its life to heal an ally and switches places with the ally. So that's what we saw happen. I was like, wait, okay, I didn't realize, because I read that it was going to heal 100% of the HP loss of the caster. Um, but I didn't read the rest, which says right here, switches places, the Coney is KO'd. So that's something that I guess we want to use. It's like last resort. You know, I need to sacrifice you so that I can heal, which is kind of dark now that I think about it. Anyway, for a little fairy, actually, no, that's very, that is very fey. That is very fey. Anyway, um, repulsion pushes the spell's target, pushes it back one cell, um, two uses per target, three uses per turn. Okay, so you can do it three times, but you can't do it three times on the same character basically on the, at the same target what does this mean the spell is cast in a straight line range oh one to three range ap so this lets you know more or less what's going on with the spell when you're not in a fight um and that's that's you know that's pretty useful so we got that with the effect being pushing back one cell repulsion makes sense you're repulsed you go away uh coney voracious over Ray Cius Gracious. I know English. I know I know good enough English. <laughs> anyway, um the Let's try that again. The any ripsa inflicts damage on the target and heals themselves for part of the damage inflicted. So here we have the any ripsa inflicts inflicts on the target three damage and fifty percent health stolen you get it server maintenance will begin in four hours i like the reminder though so it's not like what i feel like i'm having parental controls put on me and i don't like it because i'm an adult 
Although I do sometimes need an adult year adult, but that's neither here nor there. Um, 50% health stolen, damage 3. Cool. Critical hits will give the same amount of damage, right? But um, it looks like heal, health stealth, 0, and there's a range. I don't know what that means. Size 1 to 3 squares. And clicking on that doesn't give us anything else. I'll have to Google this. I'll have to look into this later. If I remember. <laughs> oh, that's the that's the problem. Anyway, one use per target, two uses per turn. So you would just right click on things to be able to pull up their windows and keep them open even after a battle. Right? We've learned that now. I leveled up. I'm now a level 16. If your screen shows up like this, the um, your uh, player page, right? You would press this button on the bottom left. It's got an arrow on it, and that just will expand everything and show you all your stats. So when it comes to display abilities, we've leveled up enough to have four points to distribute in all these sections. I'm pretty sure I've already talked about that before, but if not, I'll I'll try to remember to do another video about that. Um, you guys just leave a comment, whoever, if anyone is even watching this, and I will do that. So, oh wait, oh no, never mind. I decided I don't want to. Do I want to do that now? Actually, you know what I do. I do want to do that now. Um. I will edit from here. So, yeah. I'm going to meet myself, edit, you know, do do the dang thing. And, um, yeah. And then I shall return. And I'm back. I just distributed all my points. And we're going to go ahead and finish the next quest. This is Donalangelo. And, uh... The next quest is Super Sewers. We gotta enter the Nanny Larva's nest. We're gonna go on foot just so you guys can see how to get there using the compass and and nothing else, no other shortcuts. Right click, go inside. And that we've entered the nanny larvas next. The next thing is clean out the larva nest. Meaning I gotta fight these guys. But I'm gonna go ahead and harvest from them first. So we can increase our trapper level. Right? So we got a larva seed. We hover over anything in the chat with a link on it. It's gonna pop up. It's gonna give us a pop up of something. Now we got larva mucus, that's what it looks like. And when we open our inventory, we see those exact two things right here in the inventory, in our bag. And when we right click on an item, it shows this little mini interaction, all these little buttons. And when you click to harvest, it's going to tell you trapper, trapper level zero. So it's going to tell you what level you have to be minimum to be able to perform that action. So you harvest larva mucus, minimum level zero. For this one, it says extract larva seed trapper level zero. And because we already did it, it's saying collected too recently. So after a while, you would be able to extract more seeds from the same larva, but not right now. And then this would be attack the white larva. So we're just going to harvest. And now we're going to attack. Whenever you go into different fights on the left up here, you can see where you can get extra bonusing, bonus points, right? Um, this one says sedentary. Complete your turn with MP left over. Additional information. The target finishing its turn must be a player. 
And end of fight bonus, it gives you 35 prospecting and 35 wisdom if you complete that task. So these guys, we don't know what they're weak is to. Minus 8 for the water, or minus 8 hit points for water. Fire, this took out minus 8. And now we're going to back up. I should probably do this though. I need to inflict more damage because there's nobody on the board to heal. Oops. So this has an X on it because we did not. We whatever we did voided this. So it says complete your turn with movement points left over. So because I used all my movement points, which is this number down here, little like running character guy in I guess lime green. Um, yeah, I was not able to complete this task, so no bonuses for me, but that's all right. Shoot, I'm about to run out of time. All right, at least we got a hit in. Uh-oh, minus 10. Oh, so this does more damage to these guys. Oh, I can't move now. I don't like that. Minus eight, minus eight. Does it only go to the side? I keep for I forget. I forgot. This only heals allies, so there's no point in using that. What? that? Oh, shit! I like that! You like that muy much! Okay, so I just leveled up. I just leveled up, y'all. That's awesome. So the remains of the white larva is gonna give us something else, right? We now have larva brains, and that is something that you only get from the remains of the larva. So you can get seeds from the remains as well. However, you can get seeds from the live larva as well. So usually what I do is I harvest the seeds and the mucus from the live larvas and always collect larva brains from the deceased ones. But you do as you see fit. And I think this is the last one because that's the nanny larva. No. The nanny larva looks like this one but bigger. And it's like magenta instead of purple. If I recall correctly. But we're going to harvest. And harvest some more. Yay. And normally... Here you would um, you would see some indication and here indication of um, the action being completed. And in the chat, you would see how many XP you gained from that action as well as how many XP are left to level up to the next step. But because my trapper level is so high, these uh, lower level um, things that I can gain resources from don't give me any more experience. So... There's that. And attack! I'm going here to make them come closer to me and we're gonna start immediately in dark mode, I guess. I'll put my friend here. And... Mm. Mm, 
but that's like the opposite of what I wanted though. <laughs> Repulsion. Pushes one cell around the target, otherwise pushes back two cells. But it, it doesn't do that though. That's a lie! It's a lie! See, that's bringing it closer to me! That's not, that's not a repulsion! That's the opposite! Is it because I'm in... Is it because... I am in against nature, so it's doing the opposite. I'm gonna go with that until until I am able to determine otherwise, I guess. You're different. I'm gonna put you over here. Oh, sometimes stats change throughout a battle, so it's it's worth checking. You know, uh, let's see here. This guy is just reduced to like, let me, can I get around him? No, I can't move. I hate when I can't move. All right. You don't want to do that. The arm sim flicks on the target. Yeah, you're done. Okay. Ooh, we like this. And we're gonna weaken the whispers. No sweet nothings for you. Oh, see? And this is why you wait until a character is, you know, until you see what your move did before you do the other move. Because if you do it too fast, then I wasted that spell. Oh, wait. Go back. Oh, I can't do anything anyway. Might as well waste time. Earth moves are what would do the most damage, I guess. Oh, I am in my own way. Man, looking over at me like, bitch, you got right in the way. <laughs> I'm gonna comfortably do this. And then this. Doesn't seem to help much, but you know, what ifs. Oh, I can't hit him now. Oh, no matter what, it's not gonna let me hit it. Well, that's stupid. You're gonna have to go around to get to her. That's annoying. Wait! That's handy. I should check my spells to make sure there isn't like cooler shit I could be using right now that I'm like missing out on because. Because I know you couldn't have come this way. bitch. Defeat the nanny larva. And I block, unlock some spells too. That's pretty cool. And the harvest. Aha. Uh -huh. So we have 
our spells page. You can get to it by going here or pressing S to do it as a shortcut with the keyboard. And it looks like I can do for a neutral spell Fountain of Youth. And that's money minus 20% health points, two movement points, 15% heals performed, 57 dodge. And there's a three turn cooldown. That looks like conditions. Do I cast it on myself? Let's see. It doesn't say. Hmm. For two turns, the Anaripsa loses some of their max HP, but they become more mobile and have enhanced healing abilities. Okay. We don't like that. Corrosive heal. So for this one, it has a modifiable range. Single target spell. Range is at 2-3. One walk through point, five action points. Damage 17. And then it does a Hamel mark, which is if direct single combat damage is received, damage is increased by 30%. The Anaripsa redistributes damage as ally healing in a square around the target. And there's three activations. Um, I think we like that. I think we like that a lot, actually. And I haven't yet to use this one. What is this one? Cast on KO'd. Okay, so that's going to be here. This is going to be here. What is this? Fire. Ooh. What else do we have? Heal 6, dodge 3, heal 9, heal 6, heal 8, but in a range. This has what? Single target. We want to do these. And then what does that do? Damage 9. 100% health stolen. Gang green, what is happening? Gang green at the end of the turn, damage 11, 100% health stolen, critic. Critical means at end of turn, damage 11, 100% health stolen. Okay, I need this better explained. Whose health is being stolen? The spell steals health from the target one time when it is cast and the second time at the end of the target's turn. Ooh, we want that. We want that. For sure. Nine. Hey, this heals. Oh, I see. And then let's see, passives are things that aren't direct attacks but that like you can use as like boosters basically so this would give me 60 dodge 30 percent heals received for each mark placed there is a heal of three and a two cell around in like a square there's no line of sight plus one to minimum range non-modifiable range serial marker it's talking about Mark's place, but I don't even know what Mark's is talking about. Is it a spell or something? An eraser. Yeah, I don't know what it's talking about. Go back to the passes. This is 60 lock. We don't want that. If the Anaripsa has, looks like, more than 80% HP, there's 30% heals performed. The Anaripsa suffers 10% of healing done as damage. When the Anaripsa has 80% or more of their maximum HP, their heals performed are increased. However, they also take damage equivalent to 10% of the healing they perform. We don't want that. So we're just going to use dodge. We just want a lot of dodge. I don't want to be locked in easily. Any more well as easily now we're going to move forward sorry about the time it took me to do all that but it's worth looking into your spells and stuff like that updating your abilities or whatever as you progress through the game 
just so battles each progressive battle isn't as isn't so hard you know what I mean you want to make this this uh, you want to make each step of leveling up um, as quick and painless as possible um, once you get to a certain level it's it's not going to be quick so yeah So we want to bring, let's bring the healing coney out and then I can do my against nature thing, right? Let's see how that works. Well, let me have both of them out at the same time, both of the bunnies, because he's just a healing bunny. C.0 HP, light and fire. So nice. This guy's gonna hide in the corner. What the hell was that? Oh, he evolved. <laughs> I was like, wait a second, did he just die? Alright, what are you weak to? So, Nanny Larva is weak to Earth. Not close enough. So fire does minus nine. Is that a healing thing? I think that does. Yeah, this doesn't even do anything. Alternative cure. I should get rid of this spell. Kind of pointless. Okay. I want to get close. What's not going to let me? Might as well stay behind and cover your little arse. Look at that. See why we cover ass? This is why we cover ass. It's like, you can attack me if you want to, but you're not going to get maximum damage. That's, that's just not going to happen. This is an interesting range thing. And it's talking about mod range modification, but I literally, literally don't know what they're talking about. Like not not a not a freaking clue. Yeah. Can't go anywhere. Oh, complete your turn not adjacent to an enemy. Oops. You can go. You can go too. further from me. as good as it's gonna get I guess oh something that's worth noting that I don't think I've mentioned yet is that when you put your mouse and you right click on the board you can move it to where you need it right if you can't see everything you need to see or want to see and then down here this is how you would give up a fight we're not gonna do that um, you can make fighters transparent so your allies and other characters are see-through. Um, let me go ahead and finish my move before I fuck myself up here. 
I can't do anything anyway at this point. Too, that was too far away. So, change the combat view. This is how it looks originally. So cool. But sometimes there's things in the way and you can't really tell what's going on. So you can change your combat view by hitting Control T or pressing this button down here. It looks like a bunch of squares. Control T for combat view though. And I, I generally like to use this combat view unless it gets, it's a little too complicated or distracting. And then I'm just like, you know what? I'll use, um, I'll use whatever. I'll use the basic one, this one. Okay. Know what's happening here? Two. Not close enough to anything. Hmm. This button here is to point a cell to your teammates. So if I was like, oh, I want you to attack the purple larva, and they're like, what? I can click here, and everyone would see this little arrow, not just me. Should have gotten behind his ass. Too late now. Hmm. Not running away from me. Jerks. Go away. I can't move because they locked me in. Yay, we did it. And now we've completed. No, we're not going to complete the super sewers quest until we report back to Donalangelo. But we did complete the uh, defeat the nanny larva task. So that's nice. And I can go ahead and mine some primitive iron while I'm here because why not? A lot of the time when um, there is a resource nearby even if I don't need it at that time, I'll go ahead and harvest a few here, a few there, just because when the time comes that I do need it over that time, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there adds up, right? And if it's like, oh, you need 50 of this and I'm collecting five to 10 every time I see it, then by the time, oh, Cabinacha. The, the thing I was going to say is by the time the quest comes where I need it, I've built up a decent amount in my inventory. But Captain Acha, this little guy was so annoying until I figured out how to do, how to battle him, right? So what you have to do here is you jump to the square, right? This is the only thing you have to do. So you would select this, and you know it's selected because you can see the icon the icon will um, will be there with the with the mouse. I was gonna say arrow, but it's not an arrow. It's like a little wand shape. Anyway, the point is is that you want to match whatever is on his side, right? So he has a one, a three, and a two. So we're just gonna hit one, and now we see the one disappeared. The three is gonna disappear, and then we know all these other ones aren't two. So then that confirms that the one behind me is two even though you can't really see it. And victory! We now have 40 iron ore. So until you figure out how to battle Capanacha, it's very annoying every time he pops up. But once he does pop up, it's like, yes! 
because you know that whatever it was you were harvesting, you're going to get 40 of. And I also got 26 cups. Not mad at that either. I'm gonna follow the arrow. And remember, I don't have to do this because I've already done um, on my main certain things like activating Drago turkeys. But the same goes for zaps. You want to be able, you want to go to them and click use the zap to activate it. You don't necessarily have to travel anywhere else, but you do want to at least activate it so that it's an option on your list whenever you go to any other zap, right? So we have, again, the arrow square around where we need to stand to get to the next quest. So I'm just going to go ahead and talk to Donangelo, Donalangelo from here. Um, he says, what brings you down to my sewers, adventurer? Be quick. There's justice to dish out down here. Seriously, I hardly ever take a break. Wah! The nanny larva won't be a problem any longer. Hmm, I can feel that you have a lot of potential. I've never met an adventurer like yourself. With your skills and the training I've given you, you're finally ready to tackle the minions of in Ogre's cult. Sweet, which way is it? Don't rush, stay on your guard, especially with Shreddy. Danger is everywhere. Their camp is a little to the east of here. Take my nun Chikapi. I'm sure you'll find it useful. Thanks, Donalangelo. I'll keep it right now and head into their camp. So, we've completed that quest, and now we have the assault go to Ogrist's cult's camp. That will be um, something I do in just a minute. I'm going to pause here for now, and then I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. And what I want to do before I go to Ogrist's cult's camp is provide a little bit more information, right? So, um, with regard to some of the things I mentioned in previous videos that I figured I should go ahead and expand upon now, the first thing would be professions, right? So you go here to professions and J for jobs is the shortcut. And you have different things. Your list might look different. I usually it will be alphabetical. If you click sort by level, it'll show by level. And that's how I like to keep it. But um, you're able to search for a recipe here. So if there is something in particular that like, you're looking for or a quest requires, you can, you know, type like, uh, right now we have iris, right? These will be all the irises. If I select lumberjack and search iris, it's not going to pull up anything. So you can click through each of the professions and it will eventually tell you, oh, it's this profession that requires, um, so with the herbalist, that means, okay, this is a plant. I need to look for a plant. You know, if I was searching for something and it pulled up here, I know it's a fish or what have you. Some things are not as obvious as others. So, um, there's that. I believe I mentioned the shortcuts bar before, but um, you're able not just to put things down here in the shortcut, but you have, I think, four different rows. Yep, you have four different rows. And this is uh, the Wakfu wood cutting, so let me clear that. It's worth it in the beginning to get the sit emote and put it like right there that way you can just press one and sit down and when you sit down you actually heal a little bit more quickly oh didn't mean to do that meant to stand up wrong button so anyway um what else do we have oh we can see the class of other users by hovering our mouse over um, over them. So let me see if I can find. There was somebody over here earlier, but they probably left. But if I can't find another user pretty quickly, then um, we'll just move on. Let me go to where the dungeon is, actually. 
Because if anyone is here, they'll be standing at that dungeon. Look at that. There goes someone just now. So this person, who I have no idea where they just went. Whoa, there is someone. Can I? There we go. The top right, there is a heart next to their name. So that will usually let you know what kind of character they are. So uh, this, uh, there we still have Freya Chan. They're a Yap. And we know that because on the top right, they have that cross on their name. The heart, I'm not entirely sure. Oh, the heart is an any ripsa. I knew it was either any ripsa or a hupper mage. But yeah, looks like the heart on the right shows that they're an Eneripsa. So each each class has their own little symbol. And you may not know exactly which right away, but if you um, you know, select that character and play as the character, you'll see. So this person. I'm not sure to be honest. This may actually be the Hover Mage one. And this person is an eco flip and I know that because they have dice on the right side to the right of their name and that has to do with uh, the eco flips having having to do having like they just lucky okay they're lucky uh, let's see what else we got going on before we go to the ogress cults camp um, I'm pretty sure that was all I could think of that I was like, oh, I should probably mention this in the next video. So yeah, let's go ahead and go to the Ogress Cults Camp. Which is right here. And if you want to see where it is on the map, you got to go this way. When you have a when you have a um, something activated, as far as like a quest, you can also you will you will know where to go based off of these um, this dreidel 3D arrow whatever you want to call it looking pin, right? Also, it may be an exclamation point or something, but usually it's indicated by some kind of um, some kind of pin on the map. But yeah, I'm gonna turn that compass off. And we know this is the right place because it says Ogress Cult Entrance whenever we hover over the blue glowy spot on the ground. Oh, I forgot to update my spell. So I remember I wanted to get rid of this one. That doesn't seem to be... Yeah, at least I can't accidentally heal an enemy. You know what I mean? That it only works on an ally. I don't know if I like this. I might have fucked up changing my spells like this. We'll see. Oh, why have I not summoned my friend? Hmm. Oh, I can't have them both out of the time. Duly noted. Now we know. Ooh, I like this one. <gasps> I like that spell. We're gonna keep that one. 
Oh, I forgot. I should have moved out of the way. That's okay. I'm just gonna go this way, so if he tries to be sneaky, he can be a sneaky bitch. If he wants to. Because I got you covered. Look at that! Look at that, you sneaky bitch! Yeah, I guess where you're not gonna be able to run away. Oh man, I forgot I can only do that one time. No me gusta. Oh no wait, this isn't gonna push back oneself. It's gonna bring you, bring you in. Wait, what? Now it works? I am so confusion. Yeah, what you gonna do now, buddy? You can only run so many places. Little bitch. Fuck you, bro. And... What else? I can't even do anything else. did it i have now leveled up to level 20 Ew. now that we beat that character grambo what are they called are they called grambos yep yeah, grambo so i have equipped the next thing i'm gonna need to move forward Enter the Temple of Ogress Cult. I just I just did that. Temple of Ogress Cult Key. So this says, with regard to a temple, they're subject to a set of very specific rules. There is an item with unique powers hidden somewhere. Golden chest can only be opened once, and the large chest contains the boss key, which allows you to open the last room. So basically, you have to do things in order. You need keys to open doors. Go figure. I forgot to change my spells again. It's like I like making things harder for myself. I don't... Anyway. I like the idea of like pushing him to where I need him. <laughs> now he can keep doing his thing. No, we want to leave you alone though. Nope, that's good. Did the range change when I leveled up? Because I like this. I like this a lot. I don't know why he went that way. Oh, because I told him to. <laughs> I 
finished doing what I needed to do, which was primarily grabbing some snacky snacks after I uh, drank my drinky drink. So anyway, moving right along, the first step of the, the first task rather of the Dark Room's quest is to find and defeat Shreddy. Um, that's really the only thing we have to do. So now that we went to this chest and got the key, we can open this door. And the chests don't appear until after you finish the battle, so there's nothing... As far as I know, there's no other way to trigger that. You have to do the battles. And why would you avoid it anyway? That's, that's experience that you get. So here we go. Where do I want to be? I think I want to be closer to this guy. Do these guys look like they have weapons? And he... I mean, they all have weapons, but these look... These guys are giving Princess Katana, right? This guy's giving more, like, Wolverine, I guess. All right, here we go. Well, that's as far as I can go, so that's what we're going to do. Hey, server maintenance in three hours. Of course, when I'm trying to do a tutorial, that's when this that's when this is gonna happen. Ooh, I like that. Wait, I forgot about this. Hold on a second. <laughs> You're done. And so are you. So sorry, friend. So sorry. Go over there. Might as hell I'll hit you with that too while I'm at it. Screw you, guy. Okay, so this door opened, and this was something that I had a hard time figuring out at first. So once you get in here and open the chest, all of these are going to change. So watch. And now you're kind of stuck. First you have to go here where there's an opening. I know there's an opening here as well, but you're not going to be able to get to this lever from here. Even though it looks like you can, trust me, you cannot. So you go here, and this is opening and closing. If you go while it's open, this is what's going to happen. And that's why there's an opening here. If I click, right click on this lever, it tells me at the bottom in the chat, you're too far away to do that. See, these things are blocking. Cannot go that way, even though if you're able to see, it looks like you can go that way. But yeah, it's, it's just, you can't, like I said. So when it's closed is when we want to cross over. This is the lever 
that we want to press, which is hiding kind of in the little corner or whatever, and is easy to miss at first. So now that I press that lever, it's going to have put these two things down, if I'm not mistaken. Now we're going to run across, go this way, and we're going to go towards, and try not to laugh, the blue balls. When we click on this, it'll give you the option to go through. So we're going to go through. Now we can press this lever. And we're going to we're going to uh, click on the teleportation orb things, AKA the blue balls and come down here. If you, for whatever reason are trying to click and you're like, what in the world is happening? Why won't it work? Just click down here towards the bottom and do the, and activate the, oh, it's called a traverse compass and your character will run to it automatically so you don't have to try and figure out where the right place to click in to click is to be able to go to the next point so now we want to come this way and the reason we're going that way is because that's the next point this door is closed we can't go there yet so blue balls they will forever be blue balls I don't care if it's called a traverse compass they're blue balls so we're going to fight these grand balls. We've only got, I think, like maybe one more battle after this one. I don't believe there's more than two. But here we go. I want to see what this mark do. How rude. Now these borders, if you hover over them, it tells you what kind of effect it has. It's usually a negative effect that keeps you within the border. In this case, you lose two movement points. Way. We don't like you. Oh, I can only do that twice. Duly noted. Will I remember it? Who knows? But <laughs> now I know I can do it. All right. To do that to you. Mm -hmm. Oh man. I messed myself up, but that's okay. We still got our little bunny friend. Okay. Yep, we'll wait 
heal. Ta-da! And for the record, whenever you're fighting with other people, keep in mind that it's only um, one of each. So if you take the shield, then your ally, who may or may not have less health points than you, will not be able to activate the shield until all the other things have been selected and then it resets. All right. So one last chest because this big chest is the boss key. And Ogress Cult's headquarters. That's exactly where we want to go. Uh, is there no boss? I don't have to do anything? Interesting. It says, oh. I was about to say, why is that even on my list of things to do if, if, if there's no shreddy? So we just gonna kill him. Sometimes, as you may or may not have noticed in previous battles, if you kill the main grand ball, that's all, that's all you have to do. Cause that happened earlier where, um, when I attacked only the grand ball that had a weapon, after just before I ended up where Donna Donna Angelo is, I didn't have to fight the other two Grambos because as soon as I defeated the one with the weapon, the other two were taken out. So let's see if that holds true here. go here because I have a feeling him and everybody else are going to start ganging up on me so should probably stay close to my uh, characters keep them close to each other I mean okay Now what?
Why won't you jump? It's as good as it's gonna get. Could have been better, but you know what? It's fine. It'll be fine. Happy Paw asks you to go back and talk to him once you're ready to go to Mount Zinn. And while he waits, he's going to find out more about ways to get the cursed to the cursed island. In order to build your character and increase your strength, don't hesitate, for example, to complete these sets of quests for the mercenaries and the guild of hunters in each of Astrup's three regions, towns, plains, and sewers, or visit dungeons in those same areas. So I gotta go speak to Pappy Pal. Um, I've leveled up. No, I didn't level up. I'm still level 21. So we go here. And once you open this lock cage, it'll there'll be some kind of like sound or indication or what have what have you. If not, don't worry, it is automatically um completed for you. If you go here, this is just gonna take you to the beginning of the of the of the temple. But you can go back through to get back to the end instead of having to run through the whole thing again. You won't have to fight anything, but you will have to like run through each area unless you use that, uh, unless you use the blue balls. So let's go ahead and get out to Astra.